XFCE is a Linux desktop environment that aims to be fast and lightweight while still offering you a full desktop experience that can serve your applications as well as play video games. But it's not just a great choice for lower powered machines that might struggle running other desktop environments, but also more powerful ones. However, XFCE suffers from one problem. By default its design layout and overall feel might not be that attractive to a lot of users, despite being quite powerful. In today's video we are going to take a look at how you can make XFCE look a bit more modern while still keeping it lightweight so that it still runs great on lower powered machines. And without any further ado, let's get straight into it. Alright, let's get the boring stuff right out of the way. Theming, changing icons and the default font. In order to change XFCE's appearance, we first want to open up a browser of our choice and head on over to xfce-look.org. At the top of the page you'll find a search bar, whereas you want to enter Cogear and select the one that says GDK Free 4 themes. On the right side you'll find the download button, whereas you want to choose the first option. Then in the description of the current page we also get a link to the corresponding icon theme, which we also want to download. Next up we want to look for the Whisker menu transparent rounded theme, which we are going to need to make our start menu transparent. Since I also want to swap the default font, I'm also going to download the font Inter from Google, which looks quite nice in my opinion. You can alternatively also download it via the package manager of your distribution. After the downloads are finished, we want to extract all the files with a right click. Once that's done as well, you first want to enable hidden folders and files, and then copy the theme directory into the .themes folder in your home. If it doesn't exist yet, then please make sure to create it first. Then we'll go ahead and repeat the step for the icons theme by pasting that into the .icons directory and the font file into the .fonts directory. And in order to apply the transparent start menu, we want to copy the gdk.css file to the .config slash gdk3.0 folder. Now we can go ahead and close our file manager, open up the system settings and head on over to appearance. Now before anyone mentions it, Yes, we could have added the downloaded theme with this plus button here as well. However, because of the file sizes, especially when it comes to icons, you don't really get any feedback of when the copying of the files in the background is actually done, and it might just seem like it's not working. Since we copied it manually before, we know that it's done and we can just apply it. One little note when it comes to this theme in particular though. For some reason I had to open up the index file in the icons folder with a text editor and set the hidden parameter to false in order for it to show up in the settings. I don't exactly know why I had to do this, but I thought I'd mention it just in case. So let's apply the icon theme for real and also change the font to enter. If some application doesn't apply the changes right away, then it often helps to just re-look in into the desktop. Alright, so let's get going with some layout changes. In this video we are going more into the direction of using a traditional taskbar and in order to do that we are first going to delete the bottom dock via its panel settings. Now that that's gone we can move on to the top panel, whereas we first unlock it and then move it to the bottom. And I'm also going to increase its size a bit as well as to enable the setting to let the icons adjust their size automatically in the appearance tab. Under the items tab I'm first going to disable all of the button labels, since I personally think that they take up a lot of space. Then I'm going to delete the applications menu to swap it out for the better whisker menu and move it to the top. Then I'm going to remove the workspace switcher as well as all the other tools that I don't need. I'm going over this configuration fairly quickly, so either make sure to either pause the video or you can just use the config file from a discord server. By downloading the XFCE4 panel profiles application via your file manager you can import and apply it. I think before we go any further it might also be a good idea to now change the default wallpaper to something different. I'm just gonna pick a random image I found online. Ok, so I think it's fair to say that XFCE now looks a lot different than it did before. But we're not done yet. When it comes to rising tutorials for Linux desktops, you often see the use of widgets for the final touches. While some may just be there for show, others have the ability to actually enrich your desktop experience in an intuitive way. On XFCE however, it's a bit more complicated since it actually doesn't come with any widgets or a browser for them out of the box. However, there are still some awesome tools out there. One of those tools is called Conkey and it's a highly customizable system monitor that sits straight on your desktop. However, the main problem with Conkey is that it can be quite complicated. Despite many different configuration samples that you can find online, the configuration as of itself still requires a lot of effort, and we shouldn't forget that these downloads also often include scripts that could potentially be malicious. 
So quickly summarized, you essentially need to follow four steps to make it functional. First, install it via your package manager. Depending on your distribution of choice, you might need to use different commands, but you should still be able to find it somewhere. Two, create a directory for it in the hidden.config folder that's located in your home and create a new file called conky.conf. In this file, you need to specify a bunch of parameters to get conky working. Like I said, very complicated, so I'm just going to post my final configuration on my Discord as well. 3. In order for Conky to start automatically, we need to add it to the application autostart config inside the system settings. We basically specified that it should launch the application Conky with our own config file. And 4. Which is sometimes optional, we need to enable compositing for our window manager if it isn't already enabled by default and restart our system. If everything went well, Conky should now properly display our configuration on the desktop. And that's essentially it! In contrast to GNOME, KDE Plasma or even Cinnamon, XFCE is objectively speaking a lot harder to customize, since you need to do a lot of steps like copying files manually. It's not that hard, but certainly different than just having a way to do it graphically straight from the settings or via some sort of browser. Some special configurations like Conkey might need a certain expertise to understand and adjust it correctly. Which can be fun if you're into that sort of stuff, but also kind of hard if you're not. So, can you make XFCE look beautiful? Definitely. Is it worth it though? Well honestly, that's something that you need to decide for yourself. Compared to other desktop environments, it definitely took more research to get it to work somewhat reliably across different distributions. And at the end of the day, you don't want to add too much anyway. XFCE is being optimized for speed and being lightweight, and pumping it full of additional features kind of goes against that, especially when applications are starting to conflict with each other. However, a tiny bit of customization is fun, and if you're an XFCE user, then you should definitely give it a shot at least once. And that's where I'll leave it. So what do you think of customizing XFCE, and especially using Conkey? Is it worth it, or is it better to just choose a desktop environment that has built customization straight into it? Please let us know down in the comments. Before I end this video, I quickly wanted to mention that if you want to support the channel, make even better videos, then please feel free to check out our membership program as well as our online shop, whereas each sale helps to support various open source projects. If you've liked this video, then please make sure to show it for a like, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out on any future Linux videos. Thank you so much for watching this video, and all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, wherever you are. I'll see you around.